Hello everyone, Word Bell here again and Marcel Good. We're both from Idea Blade and this is another in the cocktail video series. In this episode, we are going to look at a really uh, useful development tool called the screen harness, which is a way of of uh, examining your the screens that you're building in your application to see how they work. Uh, it's a little bit clearer what, uh, why that's useful when we actually see one, and there is an example of one in the Tempire reference app. So, Marcel, why don't you take us there? Yes. So, in the DRC on the cocktail overview, uh, we'll go to the reference apps and the Tempire reference application page, and there's a brief description about the screen harness uh, towards the end. And uh, we have the entire Tempire application hosted, the Silverlight version of the Tempire application, along with the, har the screen harness uh, for the Tempire uh, application as well. There's also a WPF version of both of these uh, that you can run locally mm. by downloading the Tempire source code okay. and fire it up on, on your machine. But as I said, the Silverlight version is hosted, so let's uh, uh, bring it up. Uh, so this is just a Silverlight it. application like anything else? This is just a Silverlight application like anything else, and when you're, when you're firing up, it looks like this. It has a bunch of buttons on the left. Okay, now it probably would be orienting to know that the, this is a harness that displays the views that are part of the Tempire application. And if you want to see what the Tempire application looks like, you should probably go look at the Tempire users videos yes, that we did. Yes. So this probably makes more sense after, after you've, you've seen, seen the real application. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so you can go put, see that and then come yeah, back and look at this you video. You can put these things in context. But in a nutshell, the, the screen harness is essentially a shell that is provided to you by Cocktail that allows you to launch any screen that it discovers in your solution uh, inside of your browser in case of Silverlight. So you do not need an existing application infrastructure uh, your own shell and whatnot in order to start developing and working on an entire screen or a part of a screen, right? So uh, imagine you're in developing a new application from scratch. You have nothing, right? New yeah. project, yeah. that's it, em empty solution. So now where do you start, right? If you don't have anything, you might be inclined to start with the shell so you can actually start running and hosting something. I'm getting nervous now because I can't see anything, yeah, Marcel. You can't click see. something for okay, me. Okay, let's click something. So what we're seeing here on the left side are actually uh, discovered view models in our solution, right? Okay. We are MVVM right. in Cocktail, right? That's the fundamental uh, architecture view model paradigm. first. So that view model first. So if I click one of these things, like the one you got yeah, home view, I'm expecting. If we click on home view, we're hey, expecting to see the home, home view, view model. Very, yeah. very good. So yeah, we clicked on the home view model and we see the home view on the right side, but it la in the background it launched a view model and it married the two up, right? And okay. it displayed it to you. So if I'm the developer working on this home screen now, I don't need to know where ultimately this home screen is going to live in my real application. That's not my concern. Right. My concern is to make this home screen work. Right. right? So I don't want to have to navigate through 10 screens in a real application to get to the home screen that I'm working on, right? It, okay. is, it is one click to get to the, to the home screen. Screen. Similarly, we see all the other screens that we have in our application, in the real application, including the entire shell. So we can just take a quick peek. We can actually launch the entire Tempire oh. application inside oh, okay. of the screen harness. Oh, it right? looks, yeah, exactly, because this is the experience I would have had had I done that. Exactly, yeah, because what the the shell in the relap is nothing else as a view model and the view, right? So I bet if I hit resource management, we'd be back into that. We'll be back right. into that. So we can actually see the uh, entire application in here. Right? Okay. So this is just a quick peek how the real application looks like. But now we're actually working on pieces of this, let's say, right? So we're working on the phone list that we're seeing right here. All right. Uh, and we're working on that, so we don't want to... Yeah. have all this clutter around it. 
So we just go directly to the phone list. Uh, I see. So I didn't have to log in or anything. Correct. I'm just seeing, and so if I was redesigning the this this view, I could sort of like go do that in Visual Studio, yeah. compile, and then just pop this thing up right up here and refresh, yeah. and I would see just the one I'm working on. That's uh, correct. And no yeah. context, just that no one. No context, just this. Yeah, let's say you had a bug here that you were tasked to fix, right? And so your focus on the real problem, right? You need so the to plus fix works and all that stuff? The plus works, yeah. So we can click on it. Uh, we can even add uh, a new phone number. So it right. behaves uh, the way it actually behaves in the real application. All right, well, so let me zoom back. What's This is in the context of something else. Maybe it's this is, as I remember, there was an address on the left. Yes. Is there some kind of a view model around that? Yes. So there was the address on the left, which we see here. We can bring uh -huh. that up to two, up to same same piece, right? Uh -huh. So this is the address and the phone. And then then we were together, so there was something there, that held there, them together. Exactly. That well, that is called the contact info that holds oh, the two together. Right. And you can actually see it's the same one. Remember, we added a phone number right. before. You see it here. Whoa. It's actually the same. The inside the harness, the view models are actually shared resources. You don't need to create more than one of these, right? So you actually see them in action, and you can, yeah, you can go very deep. Uh, can, like zoom in, and zoom, zoom in, out. and zoom out to make sure they work in in, in interaction, in context, and everything is acting the right way, right? So we can add an address here. We already have a home address, so let's add a work address, right? Yeah, so this looks good, and if we zoom back in into the address list, we're still seeing what we're got expecting. Got it, got it. So I can go all the way out to the shell and all the way in like this. And yeah. if there's some misbehavior, um, I can really get right to the view that's misbehave or was misbehaving, presumably, yes. and see if I have fixed it for this set of test data. Yeah. Yeah. The other good thing that the screen harness helps you control is the dependencies between your various view models and, and well, actually between your various view models. Because as you can see here, this view model is basically activated out of context. Right. right? So that requires a little bit of like being aware of the dependencies that you have your view and your view models. If your view models are too tightly coupled, this is not possible, right? right. And one of, of the paradigms in MVVM and the way we recommend to, to build applications is to build these loosely coupled so you can, your final UI, the way you want it to orchestrate, to behave, to be composed together, should be flexible, right? You should be able to change your mind last minute that, oh, now this part I don't want to see on this screen, I want to see right. it on some other screen. And that only works if you're truly loosely coupled and have as little dependencies uh, as, as, as you should have. Uh, and you're kind of like injecting, like this has data, so you're kind of injecting the fake data source. Yes. Because the view model, is prop if properly constructed, is going to take a repository or that something like correct. that. That is correct, yeah. So this is fully, uh, runs fully within the MEF uh, composition. So any dependencies that the view model has, like the repository and anything else, will still get injected. That's still there. And in addition to that, the, uh, the screen harness actually gives you an interface that you can implement on your view models to do some harness specific setup. Because uh -huh. here you're launching this out of context. Which some, some views actually some, need context. Some views actually need context, that's correct. So how do you get this context in here? How do you stage your view model so that it can actually be presented in the harness? So for that purpose, there's an interface you, you, you can implement. It's called iHarnessAware. And then there's a setup method. And in that setup method, you can prep your view model so that it actually works right. within the harness. Right. But it's still the same physical view model, right? Still the it's same physical view. It's not like I got view. One, one view model for the harness. and I, no, no, it's the one. So yeah. when I make the change, it's the one that's going to show in my application yes. or here. And I often put a compiler directive around my setup method so that in my final product, that setup code uh -huh. is actually not compiled. That's debug into, only, right? It's so. debug only. Well, it's actually often I create a harness. Uh, uh, compiler direct symbol and in my project and so then it's surrounded by the if harness right I, I got it so you're it, it's kind of like from a workflow perspective you would recommend that people design at least the programmer anyway should develop the view model and uh, view almost 
like for the harness first so that they can get it right running there yes. and then wire it into the general context yes. of the app? Generally, yeah, if, if your view models act and behave properly within the harness, you, they're loosely enough coupled that you can then take them and compose them together into your final product. Well, you know, a lot of people, I mean, love the idea of loose coupling, but they're worried that that uh, the structure of, uh, you know, that that's going to be really hard. Mm -hmm. But but a, a typical view model has just a couple of uh, of things being injected, right? Yes. It's, so it's not like really hard. To, it's not how hard no, is it to make not, it? it's not. It's it's not really it's not really that hard. And in fact, actually, I think it makes it makes things easier because you if you're looking at this particular one, right? You have a view model. You have a view. There's very little XAML to this, right? What I've seen out in the field often when when developers are not decomposing their UI UIs, you end up with these massive views yes. that have like pages after pages of XAML and trying to find something in there is is a nightmare, right? With by decomposing your screens into smaller components that take XAML that actually fits on your screen, so yeah. you don't have to scroll up and yeah. down. Makes things ultimately a lot easier. And the objection I've always heard to that is, well, you know, if I'm in close to the address, I can't see it in context. But you've beaten that one because uh, when I'm working on this one, I'm here. But if I go back up, what was it, contact info? Yes. All right, so I really haven't lost anything. I can go all the way back to the shell view model. That is correct. And see the context when the time is right. Yep. So that that objection to view composition that I've heard and experienced myself many times is because, you know, the designer says, I can't see it. How yeah. do I see the address next to the phone number? Yeah, you yeah. Can. That, you get that in harness, and you, you jumped quite quickly, but if, if we go back uh, and say, okay, we start with the address, kind of work, work our my way, way back up, out. right? So we have the address, the next level is the contact info where they're composed together. The next one is the detail where they then are composed yeah. into the tab with some additional stuff at the top, which is the summary, which we can also see on its own, right? Here's uh -huh. a summary that's uh, uh, there. So you can work your way up until all the next level of the detail is then the management view model, which is this entire thing that has this the entire master detail, which has the search right, on top. Right, but no login right? and no login. So if still this was no like login, page, yeah. page, 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 just to get to here, yeah. I could skip all that nonsense because I've seen people wait. You know, I've seen this iterative cycle where they they make a little change on screen twenty seven, and then they have to go da, step, 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 just to right. get to see if it was any good, and they discover it is, and they shut down, yeah. and they. Re and all that goes away. That is correct. Oh, that's that's killer. Yeah. That's killer. I, I love this. And I imagine I could have a solution with multiple harnesses that each focused on different collections that of views, too. That is possible, too. too. So yeah. it doesn't, I can scope this to, the, to my needs. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, especially in Silverlight, if you start breaking up your application into multiple zaps, uh, you, you can imagine that each zap actually has its own harness. So you can really work in each module independently. Uh, with its own harness, and then in the final product, they come together and are dynamically loaded. Right? Well, I, I, I'm looking forward to sort of digging into the to look behind that and see what the code looks like. But I'm, I'm we're not going to do that in this video. We just have to leave that to you. But I think that the idea is really clear about how this works and how this would be part of my development workflow. Yes. And, and how it could make me a, a faster, better developer and work really better with my designer. So the designer. Yeah, yeah, I hate those giant XAML files, and everybody I know does too. So this is, this is great, Marcel. Um, I hope everybody out there uh, thinks so too. I uh, hope so, yeah. Uh, but I think that's a that's it. That's a wrap for this uh, the the uh, screen harness video. Thanks All for right. watching. Thank you. And uh, come see some of our other videos.